I so I guess the first question is, I mean, Mortal Kombat does have a massive fan base, and they've been hankering for a really violent game to come back. What has been the fan reaction so far? Man, uh, we've been overwhelmed with the positive feedback, man. Uh, you know, when we first started this game, we really set out to kind of make this kind of an homage to the fans. Like, a lot of the guys on the team, myself, a lot of the designers, we grew up with this franchise, so it means a lot to us. So we're putting a lot of our heart into it, and I think it's showing with the fan reaction, like, when they see the, the, the super... Uh, enhanced like uh, backgrounds that they're like already familiar with the kind of like up res 3d characters of characters that they're familiar with and they see the fatalities they see that we return back to 2d they I think it, it really shows how much love we have for the franchise and and it's getting reciprocated back with the fans they've been really really happy with uh, what they see and hopefully we continue that all the way up until launch so the last game, obviously because you had quite big comic book licenses, they didn't want to see Batman get decapitated or chopped in half. Is it a relief to sort of uh, be gone of having a license and just be able to go back to just pure bloody violence? Totally. You know what? I actually think that it helped out having that kind of like uh, outside kind of influence on the last game a little bit because what you're seeing in this iteration of Mortal Kombat is four years of pent up kind of like those kind of ideas. So, you know, the last game we had a lot of ideas like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this or do this? And because of whatever issues came up, we weren't able to do a lot of things. And now this one is basically four years worth of like really pent up, kind of dark, nasty, gory stuff that, that we haven't been able to do. So it's actually been a benefit. And, and yeah, it's been a relief that we can kind of go back to the roots. You know, that's really the theme of what we're trying to do with this game is, is go back to the roots of the franchise. So, yeah, it's, it's a total relief and it's awesome. Okay, and what are you guys doing to, to add new features to the franchise? I mean, you said you're going back to the roots, but you'll be adding some new new modes as well, right? Yeah, uh, we've actually, uh, we've really listened to the fans, and uh, the fans have demanded a kind of deeper fighting engine, and uh, we've really taken the taken the steps to kind of make it a lot more complex and, uh, and to make the fighting engine have a lot more depth than it's had before. We've added the super meter, uh, which is actually uh, adds more of a strategic kind of element to the match that we haven't had before. The speed of the game has actually increased like, you know, tenfold. This is the fastest Mortal Kombat that we've had yet. So things like that are we're actually uh, able to kind of bring the depth and, and bring the complexity of the game into kind of the next stage. This is with Mortal Kombat has always been like a really uh, kind of a mass market game. We want to make it simple enough so that anybody can pick up, do some really simple button combos, and something cool happens on screen. Uh, now we have that, but in addition to we have that kind of extra layer that will make people want to come back and play it more and more and more and kind of really master the, the extra layers of depth and complexity in the game. So what sort of things can like the people who want a more hardcore experience expect to find it as well? Well, we are doing a lot more uh, dash in and dash out as far as uh, the speed and maneuverability of the things. Um, we're opening up the uh, the frame windows a little bit more to kind of like link combos together. We're not doing the dial a combo thing that uh, Mortal Kombat has had before. Uh, the combos are actually kind of customized for each one of the characters and as you play more you'll be able to discover different combos that work together. It's not just, okay, hit you know these six buttons in a row and then some canned animation plays. Everything kind of actually flows together. The animations kind of open up on certain frame counts and it's gonna we're really trying to get that more like in-depth like pay attention to what's going on get your timing together and stuff so uh, there's a lot of cool surprises and I'm sure soon enough just like with any other game the fans are going to discover things that even we didn't think of when we we're giving the fan kind of the tools and we'll see what kind of uh, painting they can uh, come up with with the tools that we give them okay and have you added in any new characters this time for the roster uh, you know, Mortal Kombat has always been known about secrets. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the kind of like uh, basic elements of it. So I don't want to give anything away, but I'm sure that uh, longtime fans of the series won't be disappointed with uh, with what we end up with our character roster. Okay. So one of our community questions is because we've opened it up to the gay community communities. Where exactly does Mortal Kombat sit in the storyline of the overall universe? Uh, Mortal Kombat is... Let me see how I can frame this correctly without giving too much away. Mortal Kombat will be a retelling of the events of MK1, 2, and 3, and it will take place uh, after Armageddon. Okay, cool. Have you added in any extra backgrounds that are now interactable? Uh, we do have stage fatalities. Uh, I'm sure in the demo you saw kind of the pit. We have a, the, the classic pit from MK1 and 2 where you can actually knock the guy into the uh, into the bottom of the pit. Uh, the Deadpool, you're able to knock the guy into kind of the asses. But a lot of those old school MK1, 2, and 3 stage fatalities will be returning in this one as much as uh, we see it fits in kind of this iteration of the game. I don't want to give too much away because we're kind of early in it, but like I said, hopefully uh, longtime fans of the series that have actually paid attention and know their MK history will not be disappointed.
disappointed at all. Okay, so one of the things that you showed me earlier was the x-ray bar, and, and it's a quite a brutal attack. Can you explain to our readers how they earn that, and then sort of what it's like and what it does? Sure, the meter system is kind of your uh, basic kind of fighting game system. We actually had it in MK versus DC, uh, basically throughout the match, uh, either performing offensive move or defensive moves, you're able to build up your super meter. In this iteration, we actually have three layers of the super meter. The first uh, layer is your enhanced kind of super move, where it's basically uh, an enhanced version of any special move that you can perform in the game. Each each move in the game will have an enhanced version that takes up one meter of your super uh, super bar. The uh, the second layer is the combo breaker, and combo breakers have been around in MK since Deception. So that's more of a defensive tactic. If somebody's performing a combo on you and you want to break it, you can use up two uh, two layers of your super meter to kind of break that combo. The third me uh, the third part of it, if you've waited that long, you haven't used super move and you haven't used your combo breaker, would be the X-ray move, and that's that really brutal, like really massive offensive hit that you take. It takes up anywhere between like 38 to 42 percent damage, depending on what you've comboed into it, and that's going to be really really rewarding the players for like kind of saving and holding up their meter the entire way and it really brings like a really definitive kind of like uh, element to the match when and you've seen it it's very impactful it's it you know it takes over it's it's a big deal when it happens and uh, each one is customized to each one of the characters and kind of has something to do with their personality and stuff like that so that's pretty much how the meter system works that's another thing you were telling me earlier was that the fact that none of the characters share the same animations anymore is that right and you talk to us about uh, redesigning that and making each character a little bit unique that's right. Uh, we're, our characters are our most valuable currency in the Mortal Kombat universe. I, you know, when you talk about Mortal Kombat, you can talk to pretty much anybody on the street and they can name at least three or four characters right off the top of their heads. Um, we're not sharing any animations this time around. We Everybody has their own unique fighting style, their own unique intro animations. Even we've taken to the point of going in between rounds of uh, victory animations that really fit into the character and personality of each character. So yeah, uh, every single character plays differently. There's a lot of cool stuff that people are going to see and it's going to make you want to learn more and more characters so you can see more and more things in the game. Recently there's been a bit of a push for a more realistic uh, fighting game. We've seen the rise of the UFC and EA are entering into that with EA MMA. Do you think there's room for uh, both sort of the, the arcade fighter and the realistic fighters to coexist and then even so within the arcade fighter, I mean Street Fighter is quite a large franchise, to coexist with Street Fighter as well? Yeah, totally, man. You know, a lot of those games, UFC, uh, Fight Night, you know, those are more like sports simulation games, and there's an audience for that too, but I really think that there's always going to be an audience for the four mystical, traditional kind of like fighting games, such as Street Fighter, you know, Tekken, uh, Us, uh, you know, DOA, like any of the more traditional fighting franchises. Uh, I, I definitely don't see any problem with us sharing the same space with them. And like I said, a lot of those are sports simulation. Uh, you're not going to see Muhammad Ali throwing a fireball, but you're also not going to see you know, Raiden in, in the ring, like you know, trying to knock out Chuck Liddell or something like that. So, so there's a definite audience for each one of them, and I think we can all coexist peacefully. Have you ever talked to THQ about getting Raiden to knock out Chuck Liddell? Because that'd probably be pretty cool. That would be kind of awesome. Uh, I don't know. Never say never. I guess you know.